Breaking news tonight, Sean Diddy Combs has been arrested in a Manhattan hotel this evening after a grand jury indicted the music mogul. That the career of Sean P. Diddy Combs, as we know it, it's over. This shit is over. It's over in the worst possible way, one of the worst possible ways you can imagine. People cast judgment after people saw that video. 100%. Like, come on. Yeah, 100%. Come on. You can't tell people to reserve judgment after they didn't see a video like that. I tell you what, Puffy. Your life is in danger. Because you know the secrets. Who's involved in that little secret room you got? So it seems Diddy is done for, and it's looking like there's no turning back now. The once celebrated music mogul has been officially arrested and indicted on federal charges, and it's a big deal. Breaking news, Sean P. Diddy Combs has been arrested and indicted on federal charges. For months, rumors and allegations have been swirling around him, ranging from R to SA and physical abuse to gun and drug Now, it's all come to a head. On Monday evening, a grand jury in New York handed down the indictment and Diddy was taken into custody. He's been holed up in Manhattan for the last week, likely knowing this was coming. On Monday evening, he was indicted by a grand jury in New York. He was taken into custody in Manhattan, where he's been for the last week in anticipation of these charges. While the details of the charges are still sealed for now, the indictment is tied to a criminal investigation into S and a bunch of other serious crimes. Federal agents had already raided his homes in Beverly Hills and Miami, and it seems like the walls are closing in fast on Diddy. But here's the thing. If Diddy gets sentenced and thrown in jail, it might not just be the end of his career, it could be a living nightmare. Not only is he facing these major charges, but there's also a long list of people who might want to settle old scores with him. And topping that list is none other than Suge Knight. I tell you what, Puffy. Your life's in danger. Because you know the secrets. Who's involved in that little secret room you got? Now Suge and Diddy go way back. It's no secret that Suge has accused Diddy of being involved in Tupac's murder. Puffy can give him a mother star. Every rat in the world said he's Tupac. On top of that, Suge has been calling Diddy out for years, accusing him of being a federal informant. And we all know how people in prison feel about snitches. Being an FBI informant forever. That's what he would say. That's why it's different when it comes to him. Suge even went as far as to clown Diddy for his rumored gay stuff, something that never sat well with Suge. Into a party, standing in there as Puffy, Dre, mm -hmm. Snoop. Right. What do you oh, say? First of all, you know I don't go to those type of parties. <laughs> you know, I'm straight. <laughs> Call me. But did you, Cat, and Diddy ever hey, spend hey, time together? I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to this. I'm not going to say I never had a threesome. I uh, damn sure ain't had no threesome with no men. And while Suge might seem more chilled out now that he's been in prison for a while, let's not forget who we're talking about here. Suge Knight, at one point, was the most feared man in hip-hop, and he still holds a lot of weight behind bars. Diddy knows this all too well. There were even rumors that Suge slapped him back in the day, and Diddy was so scared of him that he had to hire military-grade security to protect himself. Suge was, Suge was like, yo, you all right? And Puffy was there, the oversaw sudden I saw Suge. I'll smack the dog shit out of Puffy. You know, he, he had said in that type of words, but we went to the concert, it was in San Diego, and this nigga had a uh, uh, Navy SEALs in the next room. It looked like the FBI with earpieces and everything. So yeah, if Diddy ends up in prison, Suge Knight could very well make his life a living hell. But let's circle back to the bigger picture. The fact that a grand jury has indicted him means they believe there's enough evidence to take him to trial, and that's no small thing. Your boy Diddy was out here confidently strolling the streets of New York with his son King Combs, probably thinking things were business as usual. But then, the Fed swooped in a day earlier than expected and took him into custody. Apparently Diddy was supposed to be arrested on Tuesday, but something changed and law enforcement decided to make their move on Monday night instead. According to reports, was supposed to happen happen Tuesday, so that was supposed to actually happen today. Um, but there are reports that something happened. Uh, law enforcement actually told TMZ that something happened that made them expedite and come a day sooner. According to reports, this all stems from a sealed indictment filed by the Southern District of New York. While the details of that indictment are still locked up for now, they're expected to be unsealed soon, and that's when things will really start to unfold. For months, the grand jury has been hearing testimony from various accusers, and the charges just keep stacking up. 
Diddy's homes have already been searched, and the feds are clearly building a case around him. As you can imagine, Diddy's legal team is scrambling to defend him. His attorney, Mark Agnafilo, is calling the indictment unjust and painting Diddy as a self-made entrepreneur, loving father and philanthropist who's given back to the black community for decades. Sean Diddy Combs is a music icon, self-made entrepreneur, loving family man, and proven philanthropist who has spent the last 30 years building an empire, adoring his children. Agnafilo claims that Diddy has been cooperating with the investigation all along and even relocated to New York voluntarily last week, knowing that these charges were coming. He's urging everyone to hold off on passing judgment, insisting that Diddy is innocent and plans to clear his name in court. But no matter how good his legal team is, he's now up against federal charges, and we all know how tough it is to beat a federal case. Statistics aren't in his favor. Federal prosecutors boast a conviction rate of over 95%. After Homeland Security raided his homes, gathering evidence in the form of videos, documents, and more, it's hard to see a way out for Diddy. Now what's next is his arraignment is expected to happen soon, possibly as early as tomorrow or in the next few days. Now since cameras aren't allowed in federal court, we won't get any footage of it, but you can bet the media will be all over this. At the arraignment, Diddy will appear in court with his attorneys and that's when he'll officially hear the charges laid out against him. He'll enter a plea, and considering his legal team is already talking about how he's innocent and ready to fight the charges, it's pretty much a given that he'll plead not guilty. Then comes the issue of bail. The prosecution will have to decide if they'll let him out on bail or keep him locked up until trial. The big question is whether Diddy will be considered a flight risk or a danger to the community. His lawyers will likely argue that he's been cooperative all along, even moving closer to New York to make it easier for the authorities to take him into custody. But even with a strong legal team and deep pockets, most people are already saying Diddy's chances of getting off scot-free are slim. And if Diddy does lose the case and ends up behind bars, life is about to get even tougher for him. As we mentioned earlier, there are people like Suge Knight who would probably love to get a piece of Diddy. Suge might might seem more chilled out these days, but anyone who knows hip-hop history remembers how much of a menace Suge was back in his prime. Remember Vanilla Ice? That story is just one example of how far Suge was willing to go to get his way. Back in the early 90s, Suge allegedly pressured Vanilla Ice into signing over rights to Ice Ice Baby, supposedly written by Suge's associate Mario Johnson. At first, Suge tried to be civil, having a nice conversation with Vanilla Ice at a restaurant. But three weeks later, Suge showed up in Vanilla Ice's hotel room with some armed associates. He had me look over the edge, show me how high I was up there. You scared? I needed to wear a diaper on that day. According to legend, Suge dangled Vanilla Ice over a balcony until he agreed to see things Suge's way, though Vanilla himself has denied this version of events. Either way, the message was clear. Suge was not someone to be messed with. Then there's the story of Happy Walters, a music manager who found out the hard way what happens when you cross Suge. Walters was managing Urza of Wu-Tang Clan and refused to give him up to Suge. What happened next was like something out of a crime thriller. Walters was allegedly abducted at an ATM and two days later he was found in a hotel in Long Beach, beaten and burned with cigarettes. Walters claimed he had amnesia and couldn't remember what happened, but within weeks he dropped Urza and most of his other rap acts. It was a classic Suge Knight move, intimidation and violence were his go-to tactics. Even members of Death Row Records were scared of Suge. He was notorious for using physical violence, and it wasn't limited to just men. He reportedly got out of control and even used violence against women. Suge's reputation for fear and brutality followed him wherever he went. You understand, I've seen people get that dough locked on them. I wasn't the only lady that got beat up. And we can't forget the infamous hit-and-run incident where Suge ran over Terry Carter and CLE Sloan in his pickup truck during the filming of Straight Outta Compton. Terry Carter tragically lost his life, and Sloan was injured but survived. The video obtained by TMZ shows the January 29th incident where Knight's truck apparently runs over the two men. The truck backs up, hits one man, seconds later, uh, the truck comes back and runs over. This wasn't just some random act of road rage. Suge was angry about how he was portrayed in the movie and wanted compensation for it. Even the film's director, F. Gary Gray, wasn't safe from Suge's wrath. Suge reportedly threatened Gray and his family over the phone, telling him, you have kids just like me, so let's play hardball. Yeah, this is yet another charge for Suge Knight related to the movie Straight Outta Compton. 
This time he is accused of texting a death threat to the movie's director. The threats were enough to terrify Gray, who later claimed in court that he couldn't remember much about the incident. And then there's the long-standing tension between Diddy and Suge Knight, a beef that dates back decades. Initially, their relationship was pretty normal, just two major players in the music industry. But everything changed at the 1995 Source Awards when Suge publicly threw shade at Diddy. Don't want to, don't want to have to worry about the executive producer trying to be all in the video, all on the record, dancing, cover Death Row. Less than two months later, things escalated when a brawl broke out between Death Row Records and Bad Boy Records at a club in Atlanta. Keith Murray, who was present that night, recounted how the confrontation between the bosses of these major labels ended in tragedy. Shook was like, yo, you all right? And Puffy was dead. All of a sudden, I saw Shook. Piao! Smack the dog shit out of Puffy. Shook Knight's close friend and bodyguard, Big Jake, was killed during the altercation. Published reports indicated that witnesses claimed someone close to Diddy was involved, though no one was officially charged. Suge always believed Puff had something to do with Big Jake's murder, and this suspicion only intensified the rivalry between the two camps. After the killing, Puff reportedly took extreme measures to protect himself. According to Keith D. in an interview, Puff Daddy hired Navy SEALs for security because he was terrified of what Suge might do next. He, he didn't say it in that type of words, but we went to the concert, it was in San Diego, and this had a uh, Navy SEALs in the next room. It looked like the FBI with earpieces and everything. Tensions between the two crews hit a boiling point when Suge and possibly Tupac began pressing someone from Bad Boy's crew for information about Puff's whereabouts at a party. In what seemed like pure luck, Puff ended up at the death row party, but no confrontation happened at that time. Just a couple of weeks later at the How Can I Be Down rap conference in Miami, the beef was still simmering. Rumors circulated that Suge, who had strong ties to LA's Bloods, was coming with a small army of gang affiliates. Meanwhile, Puff was said to be bringing along a crew of New York drug lords and street enforcers. In the end, Puff didn't show up to the event. According to Billboard, it was because of the threats from Death Row, further showing just how tense things had become. Fast forward to 1996 at the Soul Train Awards, the stakes were even higher. This was the first time Tupac and Biggie were in the same place since Pac survived the shooting in 1994 that nearly killed him. Tupac won the Best Album of the Year award but wasn't allowed to collect it out of fear that he and the bad boy crew would come face to face. Suge had a plan though. According to him, he and Tupac were prepared to storm the stage when Biggie came up for his award. Suge later recalled how they arrived at the event with what he described as an army invasion catching the security off guard. They made their way through the VIP section, where they saw members of Bad Boy and some South Compton Crips, leading to a scuffle breaking out. Reggie White Jr. recalled how Puff reacted when he saw a gun during the chaos. He was reportedly terrified, and it was clear that the bad blood between him and Suge had reached a dangerous point. One thing I can say about Biggie Small, he didn't run. He was just standing there, but everybody else around him was running. Even I saw Puffy run under and hit under a car. Even after Suge was released from jail, he didn't hold back from talking about Puff. Suge was always vocal about how he didn't like that people pointed the finger at him for Tupac's murder, but weren't considering Puff Daddy as a possible suspect. Puffy can give him a mother star. Every rat in the world said he didn't want to kill Tupac. Though Puff managed to avoid any serious repercussions back then, things are different now. With Diddy's recent arrest, those old allegations might resurface. But what do you think about Diddy's arrest? Do you feel like he will be granted bond? And what is the likelihood of Diddy beating the feds? Let us know what you think in the comments below and we'll catch you in the next video.